Hi sewing friends, this is Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. Now before I start, let me show you my top. This is a ready to wear that I bought this past summer when I went to Chile on vacation. And um, I love the print, all that coral sort of detail going on. And I bought it specifically to go with a fabric I chose in one of the, one of the shops there. Um, too much like so I'd have something to wear it with because it's not a color I've ever tried before or have anything to you know in my wardrobe too much, you know So I have a big four pattern to show you and um, Late 2017 Natida from so natural day and she's changed her name So um, I'll link all her things down below She was having a pattern this stash and she gave me first tips to choose the ones that I would like and she shipped them over to me from the States um, to Chile. So I'm going to insert the picture here of the pattern I'm talking about. It is out of print. It's Butterick 6260 list set and in this pattern there is a blazer and a skirt. So I love the blazer. I love the blazer. I'll put a picture here. Uh, the, that detail at the shoulders and the neckline, that square neckline with the zipper, I think is amazing. But for now, I wanted to make the skirt first. Now this skirt is like that fitted at the waist and hip style and then it flares with these uh, sort of flounces on the side. I thought, oh, I love this skirt. And if I um, didn't have this pattern, I could definitely draft this from my pencil skirt block. But you know, I have a pattern, so why not, you know? <laughs> These patterns come you know, in two envelopes and the one I had available for my sizing there was from the 14 to the 22 size range. Now um, it's really hard, like I've made more um, big four patterns for my upper half and I know for sure I need to make a 16 although my measurements put me in a 20 because the ease factor, <laughs> you know, you have to size down. And I know a lot of you are really scared to size down and always just end up making the size and then end up with a sack and just size down, just, just do it, just size down. <laughs> I know for me now, I need to size down to a 16. But because this is a skirt and this is a lower half, I thought, you know, I don't know. I opened the pattern, I looked at the finished garment measurements on the, on the sheets, you know. And it said there that for the size 18, the finished hip measurement was 45 and a half inches. My hips are 44. So I thought, oh yeah, an inch and a half of these is okay. And the waist measurement also gave me my waist measurement. That was 34. So I thought, oh well, I'll make the 18 then, <laughs> you know? So my, my sewing instinct kept telling me, you know, just make a 16, you just make a 16 and whatever. And I'm like, no, I made an 18. This uh, pattern is for wovens. Um, they, they recommend wool, gabardine, tweed, all this sort of stuff like this. But I made mine in coral linen. And I have filmed bits and bobs of all this construction. So you can see how easy it is to make a skirt like this. It's not hard at all even though the, the lines might trick you into thinking, oh, that's complicated, it actually is not. So let's hop into the video and then I'll show you the skirt. Butterick 6260 Lisette and it's an awesome blazer and I love the shape of that skirt. I think it's really flattering, totally the type of skirt I would want to wear. So that is what I'm making. And I need to cut out uh, pieces 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I have already cut those out. I'm looking at the instructions and I'm just seeing if the construction method is, is going to match sort of what's on my head. And they first start attaching the zipper, which is fine. The zipper goes on one of the hips. I see that there's some um, stay stitching on the peplum there. And I think that's good because that is on the bias and it might stretch out and deform. Um, I know a lot of people complain about these instructions, but I, I actually don't like looking at the words. I think they confuse me sometimes. If I look at the diagrams, that is plenty. That is all I need to, to have handy. Um, I think they're really well made. These diagrams are awesome. It's really clear what is right side and what is wrong, where they've clipped, where they've like top stitched everything i'm not even going to bother reading anything i'm just going to look at the pictures like a toddler basically i have all my pattern pieces cut out for this skirt this is the 
sort of peplum that goes on the side. I have two of these and I'm going to put that away. This is the front. So there is a center front there, a piece that was cut on the fold. So I have that. And then I have these side bits here for the front. I like matching these up straight away. There are notches to match up like that. That's the back piece. So um, I'm not trying to match them up and be accurate right now. I just want to know that those two go together so I don't get confused. The front and back pieces are super similar. So I'd rather have them there pinned lightly. I want to finish my skirt on the top with our really thin waistband on the bias. So it'll be like a slightly thicker bias tape that I'm going to make in the traditional way because at the width I want it to be, it's not gonna fit into any bias tape maker. So I've put this little remnant here, corner on my mat and I have the corner there and I'm just following the line. And I have already measured I want these strips to be five and a half centimeters wide. So when I've folded it, uh, you know, on both sides and then in half again, my bias uh, waistband is going to be two centimeters wide. Usually when you use a bias tape maker, at least the widest one I have is 25 millimeters. So when you fold it, it would be 1.25 or half an inch. I want my waistband to be double that. It'll still be a, a thin waistband, but thicker and on the bias, and it's gonna be so much easier. So I have these two here. And, um, I'm just gonna have to have a seam uh, to make this a longer strip, but that, that's enough just for a waistband. I am not going to line this skirt because I plan to wear it with a slip underneath. I have a cream colored slip and I don't really have any matching fabric to use lining at the moment. Um, I have really dark colors like brown and blue and red and that wouldn't go well under this color. So I'm just going to leave it, I'm going to use my slip and that'll be it. I have part of the skirt constructed. Now um, I'm not actually following exactly the instructions but sort of similar. Um, I have my left hip over here, this is the front and this is the back and there you can see where my hip is going to be and I've already done the zipper. I always do centered zipper insertions, I do not do invisible zips. Um, here you can see where this is finalized together and then I have gone and attached the peplum there. There is a line of stay stitching on the peplum before attaching it on so it doesn't stretch because this is all sort of bias. Um, I've overlocked these seams together and pressed them up just as the instructions say and I've done that for the other side so I'm gonna put them like you would see this on the body so you don't get so confused what we have on the top here is actually the back part of the pattern this is the front so this is the back <laughs> and we have both hips there then we have middle panels that are going to complete the skirt. So this is the back part. So I have to attach this to this, that to that, right sides together of course. And then do the same um, with the front and have the other piece there. So, um, so far this is turning out very easy. It might seem complicated when you look at the line drawings, but actually just assembling it by parts, this first, that, and now the middle panels, and easy peasy skirt to make really, easier than I thought. At this stage, I'm just gonna do one uh, row of top stitching with my edge foot on the flounce uh, on both sides. It'll just help the seams lay flat, and linen always begs for top stitching. I think it just looks really nice, that's how it looks. Just one row of top stitching there. The skirt opened, uh, here you can see the hip areas, that's the hip uh, seam there and on the other side where the zipper is and um, after top stitching that flounce um, down onto the side panel I have pinned on the center back piece there. So I've been really careful to match um, and I've marked with chalk this is the back, I put a B there, I put a B there and I put a B there so I match them up and don't make a mistake. 
I have pinned them. I am now going to sew that and then I'm going to press the seams and top stitch the seams uh, as decorative. So um, I'm going to press the seams outwards like towards my hip and then do a row of top stitching on both sides. And once I've, I've done that, then I'll go ahead and attach the front panel that's missing. So this is the middle bit that goes there. And then um, the top stitching is going to be a bit harder to do, but still doable. And um, then I just have to do the waistband and the hem. For the waistband, I have just finger pressed this in. I am not going to go and burn my fingers at, with the iron because you don't really need to. You just like make an accordion and you can finger press it really nicely. Um, then you fold over the extremes of my waistband and I'm just going to do a stitch right there to close it off on both sides. You can see how nicely it's closed off and then I can just put this on top of my skirt. There you can see I've hand basted everything on just in one go. I'm not doing any fancy way. This works for me. I've basted it on and then I'm going to use my edge foot to make it really nice and straight. Now um, you can see how wide this waistband is going to be, two centimeters. For the hem, I've made so much uh, bias tape out of chiffon. Uh, you can see I've got loads left even. And it's like a coral color that matches and I've just pinned that all the way around the hem that's magically been sewn and now that needs to be understitched. So it folds up nicely. Now I'm doing it with bias tape because this um, skirt has lots of places that curve and a flounce that curves so it's going to finish nicely like that and that's hand hemmed. Look how it looks, I think it looks so pretty. Um, this is chiffon that's left over from that Rhapsody blouse that had that like border print. Um, it just looks so pretty. So I was super careful to press this but it's already got creases everywhere because you know linen. <laughs> there is that little um, waistband that I've done two inches that's cut on the bias it's just like a thicker bias tape that you make usually for the biggest bias tape maker the 25 millimeter one you you cut strips of like four centimeters you know anyway my strips were five and a half centimeters so that when i folded it in on both sides i would get this thickness there you know uh top stitching everywhere like you saw my zipper there when my mom, uh, when I see my mom, I'm going to have her hand do me a loop and a little button there. For now, my hand loops suck. So I, I'm not in a rush, you know, it can wait. <laughs> she can do that for me, you know, when I see her again. So you can see the flounce there on the side and this bias binding that I made out of chiffon. It's a coral color that sort of matches the skirt. I think it looks really nice. Um, I got from leftovers from my Rhapsody blouse. As you, as I told you, this was a border print and to one of the extremes of the fabric came all this coral type color that I used for the sleeves and this, the color that you see in the inner piece of the yoke. So I had a chunk of that left over and I made meters and meters of bias tape thinking it's gonna serve me for something else and it was perfect for this project. As you can see, the skirt is big, like it's big around the hips, it's big around the waist, um, but I still like it. The flounce here on the side gives it a nice swish. You know, I really like that. I did lengthen it by an inch. Um, the skirt, I measured it and it seemed to be really short. So I lengthened it and yeah. That is my skirt. The skirt is big, you know, I should have made the size 16. I knew I had to make it, but you know when you know, but you don't know, and then you doubt, and then, uh, you know, silly, silly. So I do love it. I love the style. I love the fabric. I am going to take the time, watch a movie, sit down, spend quality time with the seam ripper, unstitch part of the waistband, part of the bias binding on the hem, undo the top stitching on those front panels, front and back, and on those two seams, front and back, is where I'm gonna take it in by a little bit on each seam. Now, I am excited to have this skirt fixed as soon as possible because I have plans for other things to make to go with it. Now, for example, I got this uh, awesome chiffon in Chile while I was there in the summer, 
and it's got a navy blue back with those little geometric prints that have beige and coral and I think they will go together super well look at this so what I'm planning to make with this one is another Montana shirt by each to stitch the one with the tie front detail I'll put a picture here so if, if you don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> And I've already done a review on that uh, pattern. I love it. I love that shirt when I wear it. It's just so glam. And another one in this with this, I think is gonna look really nice. For me to dress up, I need to have this fitting me right. I cannot walk around in the street with a skirt that is too big. <laughs> so sooner than later, it's gonna be fixed, you know? That is all I wanted to share. If you have this pattern around or you can get it, it's out of print. I highly recommend, very well drafted, like the style is awesome and I'm going to be making the blazer for sure in the size 16. So that is what I wanted to share, have fun sewing, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon, bye!